Wow, Chernobyl news. I always love and dread seeing this come up. I'm going to take a moment to talk about the really cool, very real science and a lot of the caveats, because there are many. First off, let's start here. You guys may have seen blue Chernobyl dogs in the news. No, they have not evolved to be blue. Turns out they just did most likely a very doggy thing and rolled in something that made them blue. This is pretty consistent among all the life forms that live in Chernobyl. They have rapidly changed. Yes, they are evolving. Evolving is a change in gene frequency over time, but no one's entirely convinced if the issue with dogs and wolves is actually a mutation rate issue or just because they have a reduced population. And yes, turns out that nuclear fallout is less of a detriment to biological communities than people's presence. As for the dogs, and this comes up a lot, there's not just dogs, there's also cats. No, people did not abandon them. They were forced to leave them behind and were told that they could come back for them and that never happened. The dogs develop feral communities and there are still people who take care of them. This is the Clean Futures Fund, you can check it out. They also have a page called the Dogs of Chernobyl. They get out there every day to take care of these animals, give them veterinary care. And you cannot adopt one that did happen one time. It was under very specific circumstances, but largely it is just not safe. So these dogs live out their lives the best that they can, and the people who care for them love them. And it is done entirely through donations. Also where I got this shirt. Yes, little critters that tend to deal with a lot of radiation also tend to have better DNA repair, meaning their DNA gets damaged more often, and the ones that survive are the ones that are capable of fixing it, and this could absolutely be applied to human medicine. I also realize there's some interesting issues there, whether it be a treatment for cancer or engineering people to be more resistant to cancer. There's trade-offs, and that's probably not going to happen for a long time, but I could see a future in which astronauts have been genetically engineered to withstand radiation. Just probably not anywhere in our lifetimes, but it is a possibility. The fungus one is absolutely incredible. They found melanated fungus, and yes, melanated fungus does exist in other places, but Chernobyl is the place that they demonstrated that it uses radiation in its metabolism. Yes, it actually does better when exposed to gamma radiation. It's able to use it in order to make energy for itself. It was described as similar to photosynthesis, which in a way is kind of a synthesis in which you use radiation to make sugar, if you're a plant anyway. Now, researchers did think that fungus were doing a form of photosynthesis, sort of. It's similar to photosynthesis, but utilizes radiation to drive their metabolism. That was confirmed. The melanin that we as humanity have seen in animals that must withstand radiation could actually help astronauts. Yes, they could actually line spacecrafts with this fungus or just melanin, really. Now, do know that photosynthesis is kind of like using radiation to drive molecular processes like making sugar for plants. We also have a form of photosynthesis. It's not quite the same, but we use solar radiation to create vitamin D for ourselves. Yes, we're not all that different than plants, and it makes sense that if we lived on Earth, we would be adapted to Earth. And this is a public service announcement you actually can reduce your cholesterol by getting sunlight. Yes, cholesterol is converted into vitamin D in your bloodstream. I know, mixed signals. Should we get sunlight? Should we not get sunlight? I probably should not get sunlight. Now, I do want to talk a little bit more about the general processes that we see in places like Chernobyl. This is an extremely complicated system and kind of the first time that we've ever been able to observe something like this happening, what nuclear fallout does to the organisms in that area. Yes, we do see higher rates of cancer. We see higher rates of mutation across the board. And it might make just logical sense that you would think animals would evolve more quickly because they're exposed to radiation. And yeah, that might. But you do have to consider all possible rational answers to it before we decide that there is an entirely new phenomenon. Just take these things with a grain of salt. Understand that possible answers, or even what seems to be rational on the surface, may not be the true answer. If you're not involved in science, you may not be familiar with that. When it comes to the Chernobyl dogs, yes, they are very charismatic, but misinformation tends to harm the dogs themselves and the very real people that care for them. They're left having to explain reality to everyone rather than doing what they actually would like to do, which is take care of these animals, which they love. And yes, no one is sure what these dogs got into that actually made them blue. And yes, they cannot be adopted because they are radioactive. Do know, people can make mistakes. New information comes out all the time, and we're all just generally trying to do our best. But I provide citations for a reason. I'll keep you updated. Follow for more.